so summer is over i think it feels like autumn is definitely coming on in and virgo season is here thank god leo season is done it does feel like a kind of transition phase i'm honestly so ready for it i'm like welcoming in autumn very happily on saturday i went through to edinburgh and saw ocean vuong give a talk and it was the perfect event to end my summer um and i thought i would just maybe share with you some of the things that he said because that was the most captivated i have ever been by a person in my entire life so the talk he was giving was part of the edinburgh international book festival now when festival season hits edinburgh festival season really hits edinburgh so there's the international festival the fringe festival the international book festival the art festival there is a lot going on in edinburgh <laughs> during the summer during august specifically um but ocean was giving a talk and it was in this lovely auditorium and his presence oh my god it just he is very petite and very softly spoken but he can command the entire room's attention so perfectly and on this uh tour i think he's giving like a tour of talks at the moment it's for his latest collection of poetry time as a mother and so he was mostly speaking about that but he was also speaking about writing and his process and language as well and that's the thing i think i found most interesting the way that he was speaking about language and our use of language our word choice and just the lexicon of our everyday lives in this, you know, this English language. Um, and it reminded me of one of my favorite podcast episodes, probably my favorite ever podcast episode that I have listened to is the episode of On Being that he does. Um, I don't think On Being is like, still a podcast i think it might have stopped but the episodes are still on spotify or i guess wherever you might listen to your podcasts i would highly recommend like going through past episodes and having a listen there's quite a lot that are really good but i'll link the ocean vuong one down below because i've maybe listened to it like four or five times and i just never tire of hearing the way that he speaks about language um and I think that he just brings up this really valid point in that podcast episode, and he spoke about this in Edinburgh as well, that our day-to-day -day language and the lexicon we use, especially when speaking to men, is like super violent. And the examples he gives is, oh, you're killing it, you nailed it. These violent phrases are positive. And he said, like, is it surprising that masculinity is so toxic when we kind of like feed it with this language and it just made me think about how words have their meanings and as culture and society evolve and develop like so does language along with that but how conscious are we of our everyday word choice how intentional are we with what we say and oh my god i could just think about that all day long it's such an engaging subject to think about like how we are communicating he was speaking about revising and writing different versions or you know writing different drafts of pieces and how you can get like frustrated with these things but you know care is anger improved so doing the motions of going through things even when you're frustrated and when you're angry really does produce a care for the project that you're working on your life and yourself and as someone who 
you know, does get exhausted by really negative feelings, that was a really nice message to take away. And it reminded me, when he was speaking about um, revisions and refining and editing and having all these different drafts, it reminded me of um, a quote from In the Margins um, by Elena Ferrante, and she says, we have to work with the bad writing. I'm paraphrasing that because I can't remember it exactly, but basically, we have what we have or we are what we are and you know that's what we've got to work with in life and I feel like speaking about books and language is getting a little bit philosophical here. <laughs> that quote from In the Margins is something that I've come back to time and time again. You know we have to work with the bad writing, we have to work with what we've got, what we've got in front of us. You just keep on working, keep on editing, keep on refining. And that doesn't just pertain to, you know, writing. That pertain that can pertain to anything in life. Like even yourself, if you're feeling really like shitty about yourself, like you are you and you are what you have to work with. And maybe that firstly can sound really negative, but it honestly just opens my mind to realize that you know, transformation is always available to us. Oh my God, Virgo season has me going off on one. But yes, hearing Ocean Vuong speak was amazing. And it's not like me to uh, like go to a merch stand after a show or something like that. But I did take a book for him to sign and I did meet him at the book signing. And I kind of just thanked him for being a living example of how much power there is in being small and quiet. And yeah, I think that that is something that if you're, if you are a quieter person, if you are, find yourself to be um, an introvert or, you know, not someone who wants to be center of attention, just know that like there is a power in being quiet. There is a power in being introverted and the way to get your voice heard isn't always by being really loud. It's about learning how to work with the strengths that you have. And again, we're going down a bit more of a philosophical route. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so back to books. What I'm currently reading is Mrs. Caliban by Rachel Ingalls. And this is such a strange little book, but I'm really enjoying it. I actually think that the film The Shape of Water is based on, well not based on it accurately, but inspiration was drawn from this book. Um, Dorothy is a grieving housewife in the Californian suburbs, mourning the death of her young son in a recent miscarriage. Her husband is unfaithful, but they are too unhappy to get a divorce. One day she's doing chores when she hears strange voices on the radio announcing that a green-skinned sea monster has escaped from the Institute for Oceanographic Research. But little does she expect him to arrive in her kitchen. Muscular, vegetarian, sexually magnetic, and excellent at housework. It's like the dream partner right there. Larry the Frogman is a revelation, and their passionate affair takes them on a journey beyond their wildest dreams. Rachel Ingalls' Mrs. Caliban is an amphibious cult classic, a bittersweet fable, a subversive fairy tale, as magical today as it was four decades ago. So I think this was first published in the early 80s. Let me just check. 82, yeah. So it's nice reading some things that are a bit backlisted as well, trying not to just get caught up in, you know, the current publishing cycle and all the really contemporary stuff. It does, it does always feel nice when I find a backlisted title that I really enjoy and how stories in good language can kind of uh, travel through time and still be extremely relevant. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's what I'm reading just now. And next up, I think I'm going to read Upstream by Mary Oliver. Um, I've been wanting to read this for a while and I definitely feel like it's a good between the seasons, like turning into autumn kind of read because it's all about nature and poetry and writing. Um, yeah, but we'll see because I never plan what I'm going to read. I'm such a mood reader as I am with everything in my life. I hate planning and I like to just, you know, go with how I feel. <laughs> um, I have a book club meeting on Sunday and I am very excited about it to see all those beautiful faces again, but also because we're going to be discussing hurricane season and 
Oh my god, what a ride. I think there's going to be a lot to speak about with that book. It was not an easy read. Um, yeah, I'll speak more about it after book club. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how everybody felt reading it. And I decided for next month, so well, this month, for September, our next book should be a collection of poetry because Hurricane Season, if you haven't read it, is uh, like walls of text. There aren't any paragraph breaks between chapters and then some chapters are like 60 pages long and sometimes one sentence is like a whole page. So I figured that poetry would be a nice way to break things up and, you know, read something at a different pace. Uh, the two titles that we are currently choosing between are Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vuong and the second option is Bless the Daughter Raised by a Voice in Her Head by Warson Shire. Um, so two collections, I haven't read either but I'm very excited to read both of them so I don't really mind which one gets chosen, I would be more than happy to read either or. Yeah. That's kind of all that's been going on lately, book-wise. Um, I will do an August wrap-up for you. I will film that very soon. Um, I can't even remember off the top of my head what I read in August apart from hurricane season. Oh, it was Women in Translation Month. So at the beginning of the month, I was like, do you know what? I'm going to read translated fiction only, and it's going to be by women. And... I read a lot of translated fiction anyway, I read a lot of women anyway, um, but because I had like told myself to do something and I had like planned something, um, I then uh, automatically did not want to do that, but um, <laughs> I did read a few women in translation picks and actually I read quite a few translated things. But I did read some translated work that was by a man, so that doesn't exactly count. Um, I'd love to know if you read any Women in Translation for August. I'm always looking for uh, translated works to read because I feel like translation is such an underrated art. And I would love, love, love to have to read an interpretation of another language. Um, that actually reminds me of something else that Ocean Vong was saying, and it was about how when you're writing and I feel like this could uh, relate to any kind of artistic discipline I know it definitely related to me when it comes to like choreographing and dancing that you feel sometimes you feel like you're drawn to creating about the same theme or the same issue time and time again and I think it's normal to feel quite doubtful whether you should revisit the same theme that you've already created work about and the way that he spoke about this made me feel I just felt really comforted and always when I just felt really comforted by the fact that I do want to revisit the same themes again and again because he used this metaphor of like a statue if you picture a statue and you're like gazing at it that's just one angle that you're looking at one angle that you're seeing sorry loud car as soon as you take your gaze one step to the right or one step to the left you realize like oh there's more to see here there's different perspective and he said like that is how you are approaching the same theme when you come up to it again and again you know it's a different time time has passed you've grown you've developed you've learned something along the way and so when you come to it it's not going to be exactly the same again so if you're an artist and you find yourself revisiting the same thing again and again i hope that that gives you you know the confidence to just go in there deeper from and know that it will be from a different perspective because you will have picked things up along the way since the last time you visited it yeah i think i kind of think that's everything to um catch you up on mm. yeah tell me what you read for women in translation give me some recommendations
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you next time.